Yo, 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 what's up, you guys? It's KSA here, and today we're gonna make this sound inside of Silent. So it's kind of that classic sort of Modi, Garrix type of very high pitch kind of lead sound. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you really quickly my settings so if you want to go ahead and pause the video and copy both pages and the effects um, you can just get it down really quick but other than that I'm gonna make a new patch from scratch because I know you guys like when I make something from scratch so go ahead uh, and just get ready to pause and copy all the settings So now let's uh, make a new patch. So first off, uh, I should say that the reason why I'm using this MIDI clip or why I made this MIDI clip is because it's a good way to test out this kind of patch because it has very high notes and then very low notes and it kind of goes back and forth and as you can see I'm using pretty much a legato type of MIDI. So these notes used to be a little bit shorter when I was making the pattern, then I selected all of them and then uh, press legato so that way they each note is pretty much touching the next note um, before it plays so that triggering with the mono legato triggered inside of silent kind of creates this nice glidey effect which is kind of a important part of this kind of sound so let's get load in the old silent so that way we can see what I'm doing with the EQ and we can start this patch from scratch so let me just quickly find my original uh, silent here, so let's get rid of our MIDI. We're on an initialized lead now, so this is what we have. We're going to just go ahead and play the MIDI now. So that's what we're starting off with. And so first thing I do is I'll set the Malagata on. I'll set this to slide because I want the slidey notes. And I will set my Pormento pretty high. So I usually go to halfway and then I tweak it by listening to the MIDI. So I'm going to listen to the MIDI and I'm going to just see where I like it. But I'm pretty sure I will want it to be a little bit less than half. So as you can see, um, kind of halfway is kind of a natural, but still slidey kind of sound. Um, if I have it on natural, it does not, it's not as apparent. So that's why I don't really like it on natural for this kind of stuff I like it on slide and uh, next thing is to set the bend range up so we can do some uh, pitch bend automation and stuff like that so I think there is some pitch bend on the MIDI clip so let me just go ahead and check that right there uh, just press this little E right here I don't have any but it looks like there used to be so what we could do is just draw on something for that last note and we'll just get some pitch bend there so that way we can utilize that as well. So that should be fun to hear. So back into Silent now. Uh, next thing I would do for this is kind of explain what I did in my last Silent video is where I work backwards by setting up my effects and then my oscillators. So that's because I'm really comfortable with Silent um, just having been such a long time user of it that I know what I want my effects to sound like before my oscillators. So that way I can have the effects I want, and then find the different combination of oscillators and detuning that I haven't done before. So it's pretty easy for me to d uh, know what the effects that I want before anything else. So that's why I set reverb and EQ before I do anything else. So that way I can just listen to the plain saw by itself and work into that. So uh, for reverb, uh, I do not like so much of the size and I kind of like a bit of dry wet. Sometimes I'll set pre-delay to around 30 to uh, 20 milliseconds. It kind of depends on your BPM. You can do a delay kind of calculation according to your BPM, and you can kind of apply that to the pre-delay of reverb, even though it's like a delay algorithm to figure out that kind of stuff. If you Google delay uh, formula music production, you should be able to find the formula for it. I do forget it, but I do now remember certain numbers for 128 so uh, around 30 is usually where I, I might set that but 
Again, I'm just going to listen and see where I land on that. And uh, let's hear this. So I do like it to be sort of subtle, so not too much of this. Um, you really notice this uh, when you layer other things on top of it. It just kind of gives it that space, but it doesn't make it too wet. So I like my reverb to be subtle, but there, if that makes any sense. To give it the space, but not the long tail. So EQ now, now that we can finally see it because we're not looking at a weird skin, uh, pretty much this is what I do with the EQ. I boost the mids like crazy, the low mids. So uh, you can see I'm just turning these all up. Um, I do listen though. I don't always set the same settings because that doesn't work ever all the time for everything. I kind of try to build these leads to be in a very specific range. And also because you're going to be playing such high MIDI, you can, uh, by boosting these frequencies, get it to not sound so flat in the, in the mids anyways, because it's going to be playing some pretty high notes. So that's kind of what I like. Then I turn on compressor. I usually just pull down the threshold, bring the attack down. That's really it. I, um, that's all I do for this. And uh, distortion is probably the next thing I would set in this case. So I would just set the amount all the way up. So now I can hear it like this. So I know there's been a lot of talking and set up to every single little thing because I'm really trying to go in depth now because at the beginning I gave you everything you needed to make this sound. So if you're here still watching, I assume it's because you want to figure out why I'm doing all this stuff. So next thing now, we can finally move on to oscillators. So uh, usually I like to play around voices or, or the voicing of the oscillator um, one a lot. That's really where I figure out how I'm going to do all the other oscillators. So. I try to get a kind of clean, I, I like to think of oscillator one as my clean oscillator and all my os other oscillators are just harmonics and kind of uh, gritty or detuning to the first oscillator. So I try to just have the best clean sound I can in one oscillator. And usually that's the one I start with. So uh, let's bring up a little bit of release on this. It's very clicky, so maybe let's try to uh, now that we have two voices on this, let's try to detune this a little bit. Just trying to play around with that release. That release is... I'm, I'm going to back it down. I'm not going to pull this up until probably the end. But right now my detune is kind of around 1.81. And uh, I'm not going to do anything else to this. So I do want to get the filter in there because the bandpass filter is very essential to this. So I'm going to set this to bandpass. We're going to try the 24 dB slope. Usually I like these to be a little bit wider. So uh, yeah. let's set the reso kind of high because I like to kind of sweep a little bit. So high reso in combination with a little bit of drive helps me find that frequency that I want. So again, I want this to be very kind of low mid. And we can add key tracking in later, so that way when we play higher notes, uh, the filter kind of moves with it. So um, let's uh, find that. So let's just go ahead and play this. So in many ways, the way we're setting up the filter is kind of like making an acid baseline, um, because acid baselines are kind of pretty much this type of filtering and you get a very kind of valley mouth kind of sound so that's kind of what i like also for this kind of stuff all right cool so now i can kind of set my second oscillator so um i know what we're going to want to do here is Kind of like I said earlier, oscillator one is kind of my clean oscillator. So anything I do with the other oscillators is to add more harmonics on a different octave or to detune more on the same octave or, you know, just so many combinations of things. So let's add two voices here because I kind of want to match that. Let's try another saw and uh, let's let's play this.
So uh, let's go ahead and start copying some of this. So let's copy our filter. We're almost done because part B happens really fast. So we're just pasting in some of the settings. And let's go ahead and copy this to part B. So I like to start part B as an exact copy of part A. And then I solo it and then start changing it. So that really helps me uh, get what I want out of uh, part B. Another important thing to note here is that because we're using a bandpass filter, and we're pretty much using the exact same one as part A, it's really cool to have a higher side, meaning like the cutoff is um, pretty much higher on one side than the other. So part B can be, we can lower that cutoff and really enhance a lower part of the same kind of oscillators. And that will be a nice blend. So uh, let's, let's hear this. Let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, so it's not too tight. So this sounds really different from part A. So if we just listen to part A now. So it looks like the only difference on the one that we just made is I added a whole bunch of uh, more drive to it and um, I had more rezo on the original. So on the one that we looked at at the beginning, a lot more rezo, not so much drive. But of course we also have it in different uh, frequencies on the bandpass, which does make a very big difference. So hopefully you guys like uh, the way I approached this video, giving you guys some settings first and then going very in depth for like the second half of the video. So, yeah, let's quit talking. Thanks guys for watching, and of course, ladies.